Welcome to today's Lunch and Learn session on Data Science in Industry 4.0, Chances and Limitation. My name is Annette Weidlich. This is a super important topic to know about when, it, when you kick off your digitalization projects in operation, maintenance or engineering. So I'm super excited today to talk to Bina Matthews. She's a senior data scientist with a PhD in bioinformatics. Hi, Bina. Hi, Annette. Thanks for the introduction. And I welcome Clemens Schönlein, Senior Consultant for Digital Transformation in the Process Industry. Hi Clemens, what is your focus for the next 15 minutes? Hi Annette, hi people out there, thanks for the introduction. So today will be about data science in Industry 4.0, chances and limitations. So we'll place data science projects into the context within industry. And uh, to start with and tell you all about uh, what you will face uh, on the way to develop a solution based on data science. And we start on the right side on this slide with the business value. Um, it's all about the business value and the different fields. And that already mentioned it, maintenance, energy, operation, quality. And you want to leverage your data, which is seen here on the left side, to uh, improve on this or reduce costs. And right in the middle, you have two components, an IoT platform that helps you to collect this data and contextualize it. And on the bottom, you see the solutions. So the solutions that help you to indeed make this translation from your data to your business value. And uh, for this lunch bite, I prepared a little use case um, being a pizza baking uh, process or a manufacturer. So uh, me as a uh, responsible uh, for pizza baking process, a process engineer, I have this idea. Um, I think that we can improve a lot on the quality on the pizza. And I thought we have all this data about quality. We have all this data uh, of the, uh, um, the, the process values, temperatures, pressures, conveyor belt speed, ventilators. Uh, couldn't I build a model that helps me based on this uh, time series data to predict my pizza quality? So I'm very curious to discuss this uh, with uh, my colleague uh, Bina. So Bina, what do you think about this idea or do you have other ideas what I could do in this case with my data? Yeah, thanks, Clement. So quality improvement is a topic which I work a lot. Um, yeah, which I work a lot on as a data scientist at Bilfinger Digital Next. So we first have to understand which kind of solutions do we we have. So our fundament is a cloud platform, and on top of that, different solutions can be inter integrated. So a um, business intelligent uh, data project can answer questions like how many pizzas were baked since uh, 2019, how many complaints were received. This solution requires a data analyst. The artificial intelligence project, so an AI project, go, goes beyond such statistical measurements and KPIs and uses learning learning algorithms um, to yeah to achieve that. So you could, for example, recognize the pizza quality from images taken during uh, the pizza baking process. So this solution requires a data scientist. So for the last solution type, domain expertise is needed or often needed next to the AI expertise. So a typical example would be continuous prediction of pizza quality during baking process via process parameter. So here we need someone who understands how the oven works um, or maybe someone ha who has a long experience in operating the asset. So thus, this solution requires a data scientist and a subject matter expert. So which one is most interesting to you? Yeah, I think that the, the subject that I was uh, introducing, the quality predictor with respect to my pizza baking process, so number four, I think it's on your slide, sounds the most interesting uh, still to me. So uh, now I'm very so, curious, um, what are the limitations and uh, risks with if I want to develop such a solution? Yeah, so before diving there into deep, a little bit deeper, uh, I want to ask you, which steps do you expect in this kind of projects? Yeah, good one. Um, yeah, I already was talking about business value. So uh, it all starts with the business understanding. Um, uh, why I want to start this project, then I will start a data collection. 
so we'll make sure that you will receive all the different uh, data quality data process data and then i give it all to you you're modeling the pizza process and the quality and then if it's looking all right then i would say deploy it uh, build dashboards and give it to the operators to improve the quality okay yeah sounds already quite good uh, yeah however i doubt that this waterfall approach so this direction from left to right is um, really suitable here so therefore let me ask you some standard questions um so what kind of data is available how much historical data do you have which matrix kpis do we need to reach for a good yeah good enough solution i would say yeah very basic question very vague answer from my side um yeah we we do have a lot of data of course uh, process data quality as i said we have an historian available i think partially uh, this data for about two years uh yeah kpi when it's ready difficult to say um uh, when it's good enough uh, what you build there so yeah tricky questions yeah okay so seems to me at least like a project with a lot of open questions along the way so and i also assume that we yeah do these single steps which you just described uh, more than once to also in, can um, incorporate feedback so i would suggest or let me suggest um, the common approach for such kind of projects which which also in my experience leads to a higher success rate in yeah you know, also shorter time so this would look like this in the context of the pizza example, yeah, we first have to understand the uh, business. So this means to analyze the pain points and find out which benefit a solution would bring. Then data understanding is uh, followed by this, but this is not only about understanding the data, but also understanding the process. Data preparation is then the actual doing. So here we collect the data and we clean the data. Important is also to link, for example, your quality measurements of the pizza, which you, I think, get from some lab labs or laboratory, to the process data from the oven. So this process we call data mapping. Finally, we have to find um, or generate so-called features. So these, this means uh, variables that have a causal relationships towards our outcome. And our outcome would be the quality of the pizza. Modeling is all about finding the right model type uh, for the specific use case at hand, because there are a bunch of them out where, yeah, which you could choose from. And then tune this to increase uh, the performance of the model. Yeah, evaluation is then followed by this modeling and needs to be, of course, performed and discussed more importantly with the experts. If um, the results are ready for operation, deployment can start. But before deploying, multiple iterations may have been done. Oh, great, great. Thanks for the information. Looks like I, I missed quite some things on my list. And I see uh, um, that the data uh, preparation understanding part is quite uh, big. Is it right to assume that the length of the error indicate a bit how much time is required for that part? Yeah, correct. Absolutely correct. Okay, and is it then also right to assume if you have some IoT platform where you have all data already contextualized that you save time on these aspects? Yeah, exactly. That's a very fair point. So if you have a platform like um, the BCAP platform where you have the isolated data already yeah, kind of plugged in and collected already and cleaned, um, which is hosted there, then this data preparation part gets much shorter. You're Okay, great. Yeah, um, then I think uh, we're set for some more depth, uh, having the process now um, here in front of us. Could you uh, maybe name us some limitations and risks regarding this process? Yeah, sure, I can. So um, during business understanding, obviously the biggest uh, risk is to have no business case. Sorry. Um, at this step, like during uh, data understanding, we need to be aware that data availability does not necessarily equals easy data accessibility. So just imagine you have historic or the historic quality measurements of the pizza process is written down on some piece of paper. 
So crucial data is there, so available, but not digitalized, thus not really accessible. So here, my message would be check accessibility very early. Um, for the process understanding, often the right experts are only rarely available. And this is, I have to say, a huge limitation and should be clarified and organized upfront or very early. Data preparation is unfortunately always uh, underestimated. And here I want to give you some examples why. So data collection, for example, um, is often slowed down due to yeah, low digital maturity. For the step of data cleaning, usually data originates from different systems like DCS, ERP, or the LIMS system. So as you can imagine, they're usually differently structured. And this data inconsistency need to be considered and also to, yeah, needs to be overcome. In our projects, we face a lot of challenges with low accuracy of data mapping. So imagine you have a person responsible for yeah, taking quality in your pizza factory. And this person takes a pizza sample at seven o'clock in the morning. But this person only enters that value at 11.55 with the incorrect timestamp of, of 11.55. So this inaccuracy of data entry raises problems to then accurately link the quality data, so in our case, the LIMS data, to the actual process data, here in our case from the DCS. So here the message would be ensure correct timestamps and timestamp entries, for example, in your daily lab routine. So uh, features that might have an influence in our pizza quality could be, for example, temperature or ventilation in the oven. However, there can be yeah, crucial features that are maybe not so obvious. So one very experienced operator could come to me and say, hey, Bina, in the past, I realized that uh, the longer I, I leave the pizza in the oven, the higher the chance for a bad pizza quality. I then can go back to my computer and then construct a third feature called baking time. So here the important thing is rather have a few good features than a lot of an unimportant one. So for this step also include domain expertise. A big problem during modeling can be a low target variability. So this means that my data only consists of very few timestamps uh, where quality is actually bad. Uh, for good modeling, I need a good ratio between good and bad quality. So here, eventually more data could be one option. For evaluation, we have to understand when the results can be accepted. This cannot unfortunately be said um, in general terms. So for example, 30% or so yeah, 30 accuracy can in some use cases be already really the maximum to be reached and can be considered as good enough. So for the last point, scaling. So scaling, for example, the quality monitoring solution, just uh, the example which we discussed, to another oven, oven within the same company. Yeah, might be more difficult than it actually sounds. So imagine that the second oven uh, is 20 years older than the first one. This can have yeah, really major effects on the model and need to be validated before scaling. Yeah, so Clemens here, these are some limitations and risk which I face regularly. And uh, I hope you now have a better understanding of that. Yeah, definitely. Thanks uh, for, for this checklist for myself. A lot of uh, homework. And um, I hope you guys uh, out there also learned a lot uh, as much as I did. Um, and I would be, of course, very curious to hear which topic in particular is very interesting to you. Um, so maybe you can let us know and uh, we might bring out another bite for you specific on a topic that is uh, very hot um, for you out there. So thanks uh, again and um, from my side and Annette, over to you. Yes, thanks, Clemens. Uh, very good point. Please um, leave us a message, uh, send us an, um, a note through the chat box or the link or through LinkedIn or on our website and let us know what more topics you would be interested in when it comes to data science. You've seen there are a lot of details. I think we can talk uh, for hours more like modeling or, or actually how we evaluate the business case. So um, yeah, drop us a, a line, give us feedback. We're really looking forward to know what you're interested in. And of course, also visit our website for one more lunch and learn session, for more white papers, for our webinars, and register for our newsletter to always be uh, stay up to date. 
So thanks all, uh, again, Bina. Thank you, Clemens. Uh, it was super interesting. And yeah, all to you. Um, have a nice day ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.